sisters, I just want to warn you about some things to come. We're at the end of days, and the return of our Lord is nigh. It's sad because so many don't see it. So many think this world will just keep on going. Such a shame. See, we have to be led by the Spirit of God. Too many for too long have just been told so many foolish things. And now, sadly, they take heed to other men who are teaching them about other faiths. And here's the sad part about that. There are men out there who are only using part of the Quran that will appeal to young ladies. They're only using the part that will draw them so that they end up being a wife. And sadly, they don't tell them many times that they'll end up being a second or third wife. Another thing that is typical with this, not only do they only use that, but then they'll twist certain passages They'll try to use the words of a Bible against Christians. And it's sad. Because see, the Bible isn't read like a book. The Quran is read like a book, but the Bible is not. It's spiritually discerned. And when we get down to it, a true Holy Ghost preacher, he can preach Christ from the Law, the Prophets, the Psalms, first five books of the Bible. He can preach Christ from all of that. He can show you who Jesus is. But yet, these men who are doing this to draw girls into Islam and even take uh, men as recruits it's sad the way they're doing it. It's sad because they'll do, you know, they won't allow comments on their videos that will prove them wrong. See, the televangelists did that for 60 years. They led Christianity astray. And it's really, it gave a one-sided, a one-sided view. The Word of God says the Lord delights in a just weight and an equal balance. He wants everything spoken from both sides. You know, it's even written, you know, that any message should reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Therefore, sisters, any message that a preacher gives should reprove. It should prove that Christ is the Son of the living God. It should rebuke. It should tell people where they're wrong. Tell them to stop. And then it should exhort. It should show them that if they'll turn back to the Lord with all their heart, all their soul, all their strength, all their mind. Love Him first. And their neighbor is Himself. That He's able to forgive them. And they'll have eternal life in Him. But sadly, too many preachers have just used it for worldly gain. Of course there's other Bibles, but when you really stop and think about it, the people who decided to make a dollar off the Bible and came up with other Bibles, what did they do? They, in effect, they led many astray. They divided the kingdom. Jesus said, a kingdom divided a fall. A house is divided be brought to desolation. But, when you get down to it, what's Islam done? You have Shia and Sunni. And neither of them agree. See, but that's conveniently overlooked. Oh. It's sad and it's heartbreaking people have done. It's sad and it's heartbreaking when Christians follow false prophets within the supposed Christian faith. But it's also sad when they're turned away. 
when they're led astray to go to another faith where they may end up being a second or third wife where certain things such as the surah that tells that a husband is allowed to beat his wife see that's what I've mentioned and I say it fallen for this and they end up at the hands of an abusive husband and there are good Islamic people out there but the sad part is that like with Christianity there's those who abuse it and it's really sad you know I just watched a video where one of the speakers outed somebody who he was debating against gave his address, told where he lived, you know, and it's pretty sad because that, you know, appears to be almost like, well, it's almost like you want to have somebody show where they live so somebody can retaliate. I'm not saying he's doing that, but that's the way that could appear. When you give the address of the person you debated with, and that, that's very sad. That's why I won't debate. I won't debate with uh, people. You see, when you debate, people can alter videos, cut them. They can oh, delete comments. Televangelists have done that for so long. And you know none of them televangelists. They can't preach Christ from the law, the prophets, the Psalms, the history of the children of Israel. They can't tell you about how Adam is called the first Adam and Jesus is the last Adam. The first one was made a living soul and the last Adam was a quickening spirit. They can't show you how Jesus is a prophet like unto Moses. See, they can't teach you how the name of the Lord is a strong power and how Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. You cannot build your own tower, your own way. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. You know, you're not going to get to heaven through any other name than Jesus. You cannot make a name for yourself and get to heaven. It cannot happen. When we go into the Old Testament, we see that everybody's a type and shadow of Jesus, not Muhammad. Being a type and shadow of Jesus, we see Abraham, our righteousness, Isaac, the child of promise, Jacob, beloved of the Father. Samson, our strength. We can see Solomon, Jesus, the wisdom and power of God. We can see David. What they call David? Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. He's the son of David. We can also see where even after his death, the prophets still bore witness to him. Such as when they said that the, the Lord would gather his people and there would be one fold with one shepherd. And in that day, David, David was already dead. See, so Jesus is the son of David. And then, it's written in Revelation. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of the Lord. See, anybody who's truly a prophet will bear witness unto Jesus. His greatness, His glory, His power, His authority. How He overcame death. Born of a virgin, walked without spot for 33 and a half years, approximately. How He was the one who was despised and rejected of men. To everything bearing witness to Jesus. When we see Ruth, we see the bride of Christ. When we see Esther, Hadassah, 
we see the bride of Christ, the gathering of the virgins. Paul said, I present you as a chaste virgin unto our Lord. When we see Ruth, we see that, you know, Boaz, praise God, he's the one who purchased her to wife. And the Bible says we're not our own, but we're bought with a price. We're purchased by the blood of Christ, the cross of Calvary, the breaking of his precious blood, the spilling of his blood for our sins, even though we don't deserve to be redeemed by him. Once again, even John the Baptist, he bore witness to him. He said, he that cometh after me was preferred before me. The latchets on his shoes had not worthy to unloose. When you go back into the law of Moses, we can see that under that law, if a man would raise up seed for his deceased brother, the woman would remove his shoe and spit in his face. And it would be called the house of him who had his shoe loosed. What John the Baptist was saying was, he wasn't even worthy to be redeemed by Jesus. You know? And it's written, when brethren dwell together and one dies having no child. And we can see that brethren dwell together. The Lord was with Adam in the garden. And when Adam was rebellious, Adam died spiritually. And it took the Lord to raise up seed. Praise God. We can also see that in many other forms too. The Lord on this, when he walked in the days of his flesh, and then he never dated, married, had children. He was always about his father's business. He died having no child. That's why it's up to him the bride of Christ, the one he purchased. It's up to her to bring forth a man-child into the world, Jesus, so that the world can behold the light in a darkened world, so that the world can behold the glory of Jesus. See, all these things can be preached. They can all be stem way back to the law, the prophets, the Psalms, the first five books of the Bible, Torah, even Islam says, it says, a true believer believes the words that God gave Moses. In that Quran, what did God tell Moses? The Lord said unto Moses, you tell them that I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. See, the Arabians, they are the seed of Ishmael. So to come into the Lord, you have to come by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we know that not all are Jews who say they're Jews. Because when you get down to it, Paul even described it. And he spoke and he said, you know, Isaac was a child of promise. Ishmael was a child of the flesh. We see that through the Spirit of God, opening the womb of Sarah for Isaac. Ishmael was when Abraham, Sarah tried to do the will of God through the flesh and do it without the Spirit of God. So when we see these things, sisters, not all are Jews. Not all are Christians who say they're Christ. You have a lot of fleshly preachers out there that preach the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. Many have written new Bibles which have removed the glory of the Lord from them. Neither are they Jews who say that, you know, because it's written, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. And Jesus, when he was baptized, the voice said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. On the mountain when he was transfigured before Peter, James, and John, that voice said, This is my beloved Son, here to him. When we get down to that, 
Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. Jacob is the type of shadow of Jesus Christ. Esau, he is that, once again, a child of the flesh, those who can't please God because of a, a carnal mind is enmity with God. The spirit within us lusts us to glory, to envy. And a carnal heart's wicked and deceitful who can trust it. Now we get down to this. We have to be renewed by the spirit of God. Must come renew us totally by now to walk in his ways. Obey his will. To want to see Jesus glorified, not ourself. The gospel is about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. From Adam all the way back to the book of Revelation. In Ephesians we see, praise God. That Paul would explain this mystery. Man shall leave his father and mother, play to his wife. And these two shall be one flesh. It's written in Isaiah. Thy maker is thy husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. The Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, he shall be called. He's called ye as a woman forsaken. So you see, it's all about Jesus being the husband to his bride, the church. That's what started in Genesis with Adam and Eve. Paul, you know, and in Ephesians 5, he repeats the words of Adam. He says, this is a mystery I speak concerning Christ and the church. See, as true apostles... They glorified Jesus, not themselves. They gave them the or oracles and ordinances of God. The oracles to show us who Jesus is. It shows us what to believe and what to speak. The ordinances, they show how we should live to please our Lord. When you really stop and you think about these same sisters as they do this, the oracles being what we believe and what we speak, two witnesses. The ordinance is how we live, the third witness. Under the law, Moses, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every matter shall be established. And in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. So yes, you know, when we look at it, everything bears witness to Jesus. And this is only just the tip of the iceberg, sisters. There's so much that could be taught. There's so much that could be taught to glorify Jesus if anybody had a desire to see it, a desire to hear it. Here we are, we're in the last days. They're evil, they're perilous times. Men have arisen that are trying to draw people away from the faith. And quite frankly, too many Christians and too many preachers, they don't have what it takes to come against them. They, they can't preach Christ from the law, prophets, psalms, and such. You know, it says, he set forth his word, they are created. And, uh, well, we know that Jesus, of him, that's written. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. He's not Jehovah, but he's the son of the living God. When he rose from the dead, he told Mary, he said, touch me now, for I have not yet ascended. But go, tell my brethren that I ascend unto my Father and your Father, my God and your God. We can see that through types and shadows with Pharaoh and Joseph. It's written that the Pharaoh told Joseph, he said, only on the throne will I be greater than thou. And we see Jesus said, I am coming in my Father's name, you receive me not. Another come in his name, him you receive. Jesus had all the power and the authority of his father while on earth because he was off the throne. So when we see that, that's why he could raise the dead, open blind eyes, open deaf ears, cause the lame to walk, the dumb to speak. And once again, see, there's Jesus in the first five books. And then, only on the throne. It says that he gave him his ring. Pharaoh gave Joseph his ring, a necklace. Proverbs shows us that the necklace is wisdom. Praise God. The law of the father and the, inst the instruction of the father and the law of the mother shall be as, as chains about thy neck. We can see. He gave him these things 
and commanded him to ride in the second chariot. And as they rode it, as Joseph's chariot would come by, they would say, bow the knee, bow the knee. And, well, it's written, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Once again, bearing witness, going back to Pharaoh and Joseph. All of these similitudes, types and shadows, they're all of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of the living God. Oh, if only more people would want to know who Jesus is from the Law and the Prophets. And that, rather than getting offended because it glorifies Jesus, not us. That's why we're at the Nicaea. Do your alms in secret. You know, Jesus did. He told the people, he said, when you pray, go in your closet, close the door. When you pray in secret, your Father who hears in secret shall reward you openly. He said, you know, don't let your left, left hand know what your right hand does. You know, but do your alms in secret. That's what we need to do. You know, not everybody taking selfies and pictures, you know, whenever they try to help somebody. But we do our alms in secret. So, when you see that, sadly too, sometimes you have to bear witness to some things. The Lord told us, he said, dig a hole through the wall of the house. Take stuff out of your house day by day in the sight of the Jews. And he said, cover your face. And he said, when they ask you what it is, tell them Ezekiel is a sign unto you that the Lord would remove day by day things out of their house. In other words, basically what was going to happen was the Lord was going to end up turning them over to their enemies and they wouldn't see it because of the veil. See, so that's one other form of doing your alms in secret too. It's because when you do your alms in secret like that and you reprove, rebuke and exhort, people have a choice to make. It's like being in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the Valley of Decision. Having your choice, will you serve God or will you serve self? Will you believe man or will you believe God? It's written like God be true and every man a liar, praise God. We see these things. Oh, if only more people just wanted to know who Jesus was. If only more of them just wanted to behold his glory. To love him with all their heart and soul and strength and mind. If the sisters out there would truly want to just you know, dress as sisters, live as sisters, be a type and shadow of the bride of Christ that he's returning for. How precious that would be. Rather than letting people sway them from a Christian church because some are too rebellious to dress appropriately. Rather than do that, put on the dress, put on the veil. Go into the church to worship the Lord who died for your sins and allow His precious blood to be shed. And when they ask you what you're doing, then you tell them, I'm doing what all women should do. I'm dressing as the bride of Christ, veiling as Rebecca veiled to come toward Isaac. I want power on my head, the Spirit of God covering me when I come before the Lord, for the angels. That's why I wish more women would just turn around and go back to dress with veils, do what's right, rather than fight it and try to get offended all the time and turn and leave. There's just too many, too many scriptures that bear witness to the church being the bride of Christ. Those are if anybody has followed my videos, they know how many scriptures I've used so far. We need to humble ourselves and turn back and we need to pray. And pray for the mercy of the Lord on our life. Our 
children, our grandchildren, our nieces and nephews, our friends and neighbors, and all who would hear the word of the Lord, that the Spirit of God would go forth and give eyes to see and ears to hear the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because there's people out there who fed you lives for the last 60 years, sisters. They fed you lives. They've only used part of the Word of God. Just like these Islamic men are only using part of the Quran. It's the same thing. Same tactic. Different faith. And when you get down to it, Yes, they can use the King James Bible against many preachers, many saints. But they can't. They can't come against the Holy Ghost preacher. And the Holy Ghost preacher will not debate them because he will not give opportunity for them to alter their video, splice it in, or to delete comments so they cannot defend themselves. See, the televangelists did that, and most Christians were gullible enough to fall for that. The end result was it made the televangelists look greater, and those who beheld the truth, it made them look worse. So, I just felt compelled to make this video today. The Lord kept mentioning a certain name to me, saying, warn my people, warn my people. Gather the people, blow a trumpet in Zion, speak what I've given you. So if any of you sisters out there, if, if you're contemplating leaving Christianity, please don't. just haven't heard the Holy Ghost preachers or you haven't witnessed sisters who are willing to actually live like ladies. You want to wear a dress and edit yourself. Feel free to do so. And there's no scripture in Christianity that would stop you from wearing a cap if you wanted to. If you feel that humbly towards our Lord, and if you want to do your alms in secret, that's a good way to show humility. As long as you're not taking pride in the niqab or the veil. Because once you take pride in the veil or the niqab, you've just made another idol. It's written, Thou shalt have no idols before me, saith the Lord. The veil should be humility and subjection unto the Lord. If there are any people out there who are not Christians, and you have been contemplating Christianity, or looking for a faith to believe in, I'm willing to do videos. If you have questions that you'd like answers to, I'm willing to try to do the videos. I'm willing to try to give an answer to the best of my ability. And if I don't know, I'll at least be honest enough to say unto you, I don't know. And I'll pray and try to get you an answer. As for the, you know, the Christian ladies out there, you Christian sisters, I don't know what the big deal is about a dress or a veil. As a person who's made himself an eunuch for the Lord to minister both male and female at different times, I enjoy ministering as a male. I enjoy ministering boldly. But I also enjoy times like this because the souls of the sisters are very, very precious just as the souls of the brothers out there.
Don't mind looking through a veil. Don't mind a dress. Don't mind being covered. Don't mind gloves. It's no big deal. It doesn't uh, hinder my masculinity one bit. It doesn't, you know, hinder my ego. It doesn't hurt my pride and ego. Because Jesus Christ means more than anything else. If we're truly a Christian. To be his bride means more than anything else. To believe as he commands. Speak as he commands. Dress as he commands. And live as he commands. So that he's gloried in all three areas. Belief, speech, and life. If anybody has watches, pray to God. I hope and I pray that you consider these things. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And if I can, I'll try to answer. May God bless.